Hello everyone, my name is Tina Eichstead, speech language pathologist and product manager here at Pearson Clinical Assessment, bringing you a deep dive video today on third camera hacks. I'm here with my colleague and friend, Tom Parham, who is another product manager here with us and manages most of our ability and achievement products. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me. So we're gonna do three different camera views today and some of the things that we've tried and gathered from around our own houses to help illustrate all the different ways you might think about helping your examinees, if you're trying assessment or learning about it right now, to experiment with that third camera. So Tom, let's do the first view. Let's do the room view, where we wanna see what's in the room before we do the administration and kind of set that up for what we might be trying. So in this case, Tom, just taking that third camera, which I've invited separately to the meeting through a different email address, to show me the room. So I might ask him, hey Tom, why don't you show me what's around your room? You can pick up that extra device and just literally show that around the room. I'm looking for TVs on, I'm looking for pets or siblings or anything that might be a distraction during the administration. So I would ask Tom at this point or his parent or caregiver to move those things out of the room, video games, devices that are external, anything like that. So that's a pretty straightforward view. That's easy to do when you invite that extra device into your meeting. Now let's go ahead and do the hacks, Tom, that you've came up, come up with for the second view, which is the view of the screen. Right. Okay. So um, the key when you're trying to set up a view of the screen that a uh, examinee is going to be using um, is to try to establish the right height um, and distance from the screen. A uh, stack of books usually works well because it's fairly mobile and you can take books out um, or add them to, to get the height about right. And you want to aim for the center point of the monitor that you're looking at, uh, but far enough away as to not block movement. So I can still get my hand through here. So uh, we've just taken this stack of books and we've added a backstop here in the form of uh, a lovely little dinosaur. Um, he's got some good weight to him and so you can just set the phone uh, on its side there and you can see all four corners of the screen now. So that's really important that you get the full view of the entire screen so that no matter where the target is, the examiner is reaching for, you can see that. Um, so this is an example of a pointing task that we might do in an administration. Um, and in this case, we're showing something with a lot of different pictures or a, a, you know, a number of different stimuli that you might be pointing to, pictures or objects. And I can see very clearly for this pointing task, I could see Tom's face, but I can also see the image of the screen. And so Tom, go ahead and point to any one of those um, cats on the screen. And it's very easy for me to see which one he's actually pointing to. Some of our stimuli are a single image that are pretty detailed. So John, Tom, can you show a single image for us, please, so we can see how that image, of course, why it for product manager, Tom, good work. Um, show me, for example, the, the smallest child holding the bunny. Can you point to that for me, please? So you'll know the stimuli, and even in a picture that's got some small detail, this camera angle allows us to see very quickly what he's pointing to for that kind of a task. I also have, on my side, I went around the house and I found one of our kids' small easels from a craft project that is an easy place to set a cell phone on, for example, or I went to the office area, office supplies area, and I found a binder clip. And binder clip is a really easy thing to stick on the bottom of your phone. And then certainly it would sit on any hard surface. So then I was looking for height, just assuming I didn't have a lot of books right at my disposal. And I went to the kitchen and grabbed the flower Tupperware container. And I set that camera right on top of that container. And it's very, very sturdy and easy to manage or if you don't have Tupperware containers in your house, maybe you have nut butters. In our case, we use a little GIF, and the camera goes right up on top of that as well. So anything with height that's stable, you can find anywhere in your house. So Tom, let's go to the third camera view, and this is the modified document camera. We know that our examinees likely are not gonna have document cameras in, our home, in their homes, um, and if they don't, and they still have a smartphone, it's easy for us to help them set up that modified camera. So go ahead, Tom, and show us what you got. All right. So over here, uh, we have a device that my uh, son helped me build. Uh, it's got a uh, popcorn tin with some counterweight in it, and we used a little bit of a book to get the, the height just about right. And it's over like a, a sheet that you might want to uh, track movements on, like a response booklet or something like that. And it's as simple as just placing the phone on uh, the sticks. There to look down, you can see right there, I've got the orientation actually a little bit off. This is part of the experimentation process. You wanna make sure you give yourself enough time to work out some of the kinks. 
Um, so now the page is rotated, but I've got it all in frame. Sometimes you have to tilt your phone up and reposition it so that it gets uh, you know, the right rotation on the camera. So just give yourself some time to figure out stuff like that. And Tom, I'm gonna show one thing here and that's what Zoom has called the spotlight view or spotlight video. So if I click on this particular camera, I can go to spotlight view. So in now my frame as an examiner, I see my face, Tom's face, and a spotlighted viewer of larger view, nice smiley face, of what Tom is seeing and writing on, on screen like a response booklet. So while well, Pokemon isn't a test item, you can get the idea <laughs> that we are looking at a very close up view of what Tom is doing on his desktop work. Tom, you have one more orientation that you wanna show and share about this modified doc cam. Yeah, so this uh, landscape orientations are a little bit harder uh, to get right for the positioning, but with a little bit of uh, practice and patience, you can figure it out. Um, here we've got a couple of construction shims rubber banded together uh, to provide a little bit of tension, and we just stuck that into our stack of books. So over here on the side of the desk, I've got a landscape oriented uh, piece of paper you might wanna track movements on. Um, and I wrote down my procedure uh, up here to help me remember how I have to orient the phone. So I turn it towards myself, clockwise, down flat, and spin it around. And then into the holding device. And there we've got a document camera that unobtrusively uh, looks down over a larger piece of paper. In this case, also featuring a bunny drawn by my five-year-old. Very good artwork that we should also mention is a copyright piece of, piece of artwork by Tom's daughter, right. Annabelle. So um, this is a great way to then look at a different way to hack that third camera as well. Thanks, Tom. And once again, I can go to Spotlight View if there's handwriting going on and see that very large, while I can also look at Tom's face in the camera image on my right off to the side in my view. So that's great. So I will cancel the Spotlight video. Oh. That's okay. We'll cat. go back to gallery view. Oh, we have a kitty cat. And I will just focus here that we have also, like I used a paint stick for mine in from the garage. And all I need to do for that, if I needed a firm surface, is just literally rubber band it onto my phone. And that becomes my document camera in between books. Or I went in the kitchen and I found a spatula. These also are nice and sturdy pieces of length to get your document camera going. So that's great. These are our hacks. This is what we've got to share with you over time. And um, we hope that you have great fun as you might be experimenting or looking at ways to see student work in a different way while we're all sheltering at home. Happy hacking. Thanks for your help, Tom. Thanks, Mike.